right, hi guys. Um, this is going to be a lesson uh, via video for lesson 3.3. .3. It's on properties of math. Um, so properties are kind of like the grammar of math. They're the rules that kind of let us know like what we're allowed and not allowed to do. Um, so not really things that ultimately you'll have to memorize like this property, what name does it mean, and what does it do, but just understanding that these are things you're allowed to do in math in order to solve equations, which is kind of what we're getting at in Chapter 3. Uh, we have like a little warm-up bell ringer in here. So what I want you guys to do, and you can pause the video so that you have a second to do it, is take these items A through F and place them in where you think they belong. Either order matters for completing that task or order does not matter. In other words, like the order that you do the things that would require to take you to do that task. So go ahead and pause for a second. I'm just going to pause for a minute here. Um, and then I'll come right back into it. Okay, hopefully you're done now. So, A, task A is fasten five shirt buttons. Does that matter what order you do that in? Well, it doesn't really matter, right? You could order them in, fasten them in any order you want. It might be a little more complicated to do it one way than the other, but the order doesn't really matter here. Um, task B, put on a shirt and tie. There you should have said that order matters because if you put the tie on first and then the shirt, no one's going to know that you're wearing the tie. So there you have to put the shirt on first and then put on the tie. C, fill and seal an envelope. Again, there order matters. If I seal the envelope first, then I can't fill it. So I have to fill first and then seal it. Uh, floss your teeth for D. Order doesn't matter. There doesn't matter if I start with my front teeth or my back teeth or my top or my bottom as long as I get them all. Um, task E, put on your shoes, meaning like your left and right shoe. Does it really matter if you put on your left shoe first or your right shoe first? No, it does not. So E, we'll go over here in order. Does not matter. And then chew and swallow definitely matters. You need to chew first and then swallow. So that kind of leads us into a property in math where order sometimes matters and sometimes doesn't. And those are called the commutative properties. That's how you say that word. Properties, because there's actually more than one commutative property. So I want you to take a look at those equations down there. Which of the following are true? So you have an expression, an equal sign, and another expression. So I'm asking you, which of these are the same on both sides? Okay, so 5 plus 6, is that the same as 6 plus 5? 8 times 4, is that the same as 4 times 8? 9 minus 7, is that the same as 7 minus 9? You guys get the idea. So again, pause, and then start it up again when you're ready. Okay, which of the following did you think were true? Which ones did you circle or star or whichever ones you thought were true? The ones that are true are these ones. 5 plus 6 is 11. 6 plus 5 is 11. 8 times 4 is 32. 4 times 8 is 32. 9 minus 7 is 2, but 7 minus 9 would be a negative number. It's actually negative 2 because 7 is smaller than 9. And 10 divided by 2 is 5, but 2 divided by 10 Remember, dividing is like fractions, so 2 divided by 10 would be the same as like 2 tenths as a fraction, and if I simplify that, it's actually 1 fifth, right? That's actually the reciprocal of this answer over here, so these are not equal, and these are not equal. So take a look at the operations. I did a different operation for each expression. Here it was adding, multiplying, subtraction, division. So it works when it was an adding problem, or a multiplying problem. And if you look, all I did in all of these examples was I switched the order of the numbers. So here I had 5 first and then 6, and then 6 and then 5. 8 and then 4, 4 and then 8. 9 and then 7, 7 and then 9, 10 and 2, 2 and 10. So when I'm adding or multiplying, I can switch up the order of the add-ins or the factors and I still get the same answer. But I cannot do that with subtraction. If I change the order of the numbers, I get a totally different answer. That's the commutative property. That's what it's trying to tell us, is that if I change the order of the numbers in an addition problem or in a multiplication problem, I will get the same answer. So I'm allowed to do that. That sometimes helps us solve an equation, changing up the order of the numbers. So, and that's what it's going to say right here, the commutative properties of addition and multiplication, meaning there's a commutative property of addition and a commutative property of multiplication. So, changing the order, big important word there, of your add-ins or your factors does not 
change your summary or product. And then I'm going to give you some examples because on your homework tonight, you're basically going to have to look at examples and tell me what property it represents. So here's some more examples. If you saw this on your homework tonight, 5 plus 8 equals 8 plus 5, you would say, oh, that's demonstrating the commutative property of addition. Okay? You do have to say of what operation. If you just said commutative property, I would have to take points off because of what operation. Well, that's easy enough to figure out. You just look at what's happening in the problem. So this one here, I would say that's the commutative property of multiplication. Remember, the number next parentheses still means multiplying. Now, that says numbers because we can also apply these properties to variables, which is why we're talking about that in this chapter, because we've worked a lot with variables and expressions and coefficients and constants and all that good stuff. So, same thing if I'm adding two variables. It doesn't matter if I say a plus b or b plus a. That's going to give me the same answer. And same for multiplying. If I do a times b, a variable next to a variable means multiplying, then that's the same as b times a. Okay? So this would be the commutative property of addition. This one would be the commutative property of multiplication. All right, let's look at another group of properties. So, once again, I want you to figure out which of the following are true. You can circle them, star them, but pause for a second here. All right, associative properties is how you say that word. Hopefully you said that this one and this one were true. Parentheses first, right? So five plus, so three plus one is four, and then five plus four is nine. Here five plus three is eight, and then eight plus one is nine. Here, five times three is 15, and then four times 15 is 60. Here, 4 times 5 is 20, and then 20 times 3 is 60. In the other examples, it doesn't work out. Uh, here, 4 minus 2 is 2, and then 8 minus 2 is 6. But over here, 8 minus 4 is 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2, so those are not equal to each other. Over here, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. Over here, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and then 2 divided by 3, well, the best way I could write that would be as a fraction, 2 thirds. So those are also not equal. Now what changed here? If you look, I did not change the order of the numbers like I did for commutative. 5, 3, 1, 5, 3, 1. They're in the same order for all the examples, not only the ones that worked. What did I change? Have you guys figured it out? What I changed was where the parentheses are. I changed the grouping. Here, I put 3 and 1 in parentheses, which forces you to add them first. Here I put 5 and 3 in parentheses, which forces you to add those two first. But it didn't matter how I grouped these, I still got the same answer. What it does matter was subtraction and division. I can't change the grouping and get the same answer. So again, it's multiplying and adding that these associated properties work for. So there's an associated property of addition, an associated property of multiplication, and the big thing here is that you're allowed to change the grouping. In other words, the parentheses. In addition to writing in grouping in your notes, you might want to actually just put some parentheses in. So moving the parentheses is the associative property. Moving the actual numbers is the commutative property. And so then here's some examples. And you guys may want to pause to be able to have enough time to write these down, okay? So showing again that 5, 7 plus 4 plus 2 and 7 plus 4 plus 2, the numbers are in the same spots, but the parentheses have moved, okay? So that's showing the associative property. So on your homework tonight, if you saw an example like this, you would call that the associative property of addition. And just like commutative, you would have to say of addition or of multiplication or else you'd lose like a half point. You can abbreviate, so you can see I kind of abbreviated here. You even could say like APA for associative property of addition or APM for associative property of multiplication. Same, same thing for commutative. You can do CPA for commutative property of addition, CPM for commutative property of multiplication. Those are totally fine. All right. Um, some of the things you're going to do on your homework tonight is then simplify the expression by using the properties we just learned here. So like 7 plus the quantity 12 plus x. Well, right now I can't do that because we've learned that I can't add a constant and a variable together. They'd have to both be x or both be constants. But if I use the associative property of addition, that allows me to change the grouping, right? That allows me to change where the parentheses are. So I can rewrite this. I'm not going to change the order of the numbers. They're all in the same spots. But I'm going to move the parentheses. And then now I can actually simplify that, do that math. 
Okay, so 7 plus 12 is 19. I can't add 19 to the x, but this is more simple still than my original expression. So my final answer there would be 19 plus x. Your answer is still going to be an expression, and we'll get down to just a single number or a single variable. All right, let's take a look at example 2. 6 and 1 tenth plus x plus 8.4. Here, if I change the parentheses, is that helping? Well, not really, because if I keep it in the same order and move the parentheses, then it's still going to be around a number and a variable. So that's not really helpful. So really what I want to do here is use the commutative property. I want to change the order of the numbers. So I want to go, well, I'll keep 6.1 here, but I'm basically going to flop these two and do 8.4 and then x. So I don't have to move the parentheses, but I'm moving the numbers around. So that's the commutative property of addition. Then I can go ahead and actually add these two together. That'll give me 14.5 plus x would be my simplified expression there. All right, last example. Multiplying 2 thirds times 1 half times y. Well, I can't really do anything with 1 half times y, but if I can multiply 2 thirds and a half together, that would help out. Which property is going to help me do that? Well, they're already next to each other, so I don't need to change the order. I need to change the group. So I want parentheses around the two-thirds and the one-half, and not around the y. So that's the associative property of multiplication. And then remember, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. I can simplify that, so my simplest expression would be one-third y. All right, addition property is 0. What it tells us is that the sum of any number and 0 is going to be that number super basic, obvious stuff we learned back in like first grade or maybe even kindergarten, right? So here's your examples. If you saw like 6 plus 0 equals 6 on your homework, you would say that that's A through Z, the addition property of 0. In other words, a number plus 0 is always going to equal itself. Same thing with variables. A variable plus 0 is always going to equal itself. If you were asked to simplify an expression and it looked like this, you would say, well, E plus 0, any variable plus 0 is itself, so the simplest way to write this would be uh, last property here, the multiplication property of 0 is the first one here. It says that the product of any number and 0 is always going to be 0. And then the multiplication property of 1 tells us that the product of any number and 1 is going to be that same number. And these you could abbreviate as n through z for multiplication property of 0, and then n through o for multiplication property of 1 might actually want to write 1 because sometimes people think the O is like a 0 and they mix these two up. So examples, the top ones are multiplication property 0, the bottom ones are multiplication property 1. So multiplication property 0 says that 9 times 0 would be 0. Multiplication property of 1 tells you that 4 times 1 is going to be 4. Same thing with variables. So for simplifying, you have, if I had 9 times 0 times p, well, 9 times 0 is 0. And then 0 times p, the multiplication property 0, tells me that 0 times anything is still just 0. Over here, the multiplication property 1 tells me that anything times 1 is itself. So then I have 4.5 times r, or you could get rid of the time sign here. And that would be your expression there. All right, pause and see if you can figure out which are the correct properties here, and then I'll give you the answers. Okay, so the first one there, 3 plus x plus y equals 3 plus x plus y. They're all in the same order, but the grouping has been changed. So that is the associative property of addition. 2, f plus 0 equals f. You're adding 0 to something and getting the same thing back. So that's the addition property of 0. That little line just needs to be b. 4 plus 0 plus 9 equals 4 plus 9 plus 0. I changed up the order of the add-in. So that's the commutative property of addition. 25 times 1 equals 25. I'm multiplying by 1 and getting the same answer. So that's the multiplication property of 1. 7 times w times 8 equals 7 times 8 times w. I've changed the order in a multiplication problem. So that's the commutative property of multiplication. y times 0 equals 0. I'm multiplying by 0. So that's the multiplication property of 0. And then j times 6 times 3 equals j times 6 times 3. I've changed the grouping. So that is the associative property of multiplication. And that's it. Um, you will now get a worksheet to work on your homework. Good luck.